there was Des. <laughs> this actually is the uh, inner sanctum at uh, Central Park. Wigan's dressing room, the home of Rugby League's most successful team. And behind me, Taffy just making final preparations with the players due in the next few minutes, especially to that number 13 shirt. Look at the loving care that he's putting in on that. That will be worn by Ellery Hanley this afternoon. And this is the silverware currently on hold by Wigan. We've got the Challenge Cup, we've got the Lancashire Cup, we've got the World Club Championship as well. But there's no place yet for the John Player Special Trophy. Now, they hope to get their hands on that a little firmer this afternoon, but they've got a tough game again. Uh, it's, uh, they take on Halifax, and they too, rather like Wigan, have made a shaky start to the league season. Castleford are the clear leaders. They walloped St Helens last week, but Widnes are looking dangerous as they move into second place. Wigan are eighth, and some say they're not a patch on the side which won the Challenge Cup with so much flair last April. Gregory. Oh, that's a beautiful ball from Gregory to Dean Bell. This looks good. Henderson Gill at the corner. That's a magnificent try. Bell. To Kevin Iroh. Kevin Iroh is going for that line. He's going to be Robinson. He's got the size to hold him off. And he's in. Gregory certainly wanted the ball, but that's a good ball. Out to Gill. Missing the man to Dean Bell. To Edwards. Beautiful play to Leiden. That's a try. Nobody in the world would have beaten you today. Nobody. You make me the proudest bloke in the world, but most of all, you won't realise it until you're retired. You've, you've set yourself... I don't think anyone will play like that. In the eyes of many people, Wigan produced a performance of near perfection at Wembley. It was a day when all their stars played to their peak, and Halifax, who were the cup holders, could do absolutely nothing. It was one of the most complete destruction jobs ever seen at Wembley. He's going all the way! What a try! That must be one of the all-time great tries at Wembley! But this season, Wigan have not been their old self. And last week, in a bad-tempered game at Salford, they ended up with ten players on the pitch and lost. So are Wigan finding it too tough to stay at the top? Well, we have had a few injury problems and uh, a number of players have come back from tour and obviously may have been a little bit jaded, but uh, I think it's basically not being able to put the same team out on the field on a, on a weekly basis. But in saying all that, I, th I think the general standard of all the other sides has improved greatly. To make matters worse, Wigan have had another much publicised player row. Last year, Ellery Hanley lost the captaincy to Sean Edwards. This year, the captaincy is back with Ellery, and Edwards feels aggrieved. Coach Graham Lowe puts his foot down firmly when players step out of line. My situation down here at Wigan is always uh, exposed more than anyone else because these blokes are named players, um, and if, if, any, if, if they don't see a player out on the field, there's that much read into every situation. Whereas if, um, if, if a player or a lesser-known player from another club is, is dropped from the side for some reason, that doesn't, no one even raises an eyelid. But uh, if I have take some action against one of our players, well, my phone's red hot the next day with all, with all the media wondering what the heck's going on. So, Graham, basically what you're saying is that you can have world-class players all over the place, but if they're not prepared to give you 100% effort, you're not interested in them. That's right. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. Um, if the player doesn't want to be totally committed to the club, well, he's better off somewhere else or watching the game. And that applies to the likes of Andy Gregory as well. Now acknowledged as the world's best scrum half, he established himself on last summer's tour of Australia. Now he's in demand from the Aussies as well. He's also got a successful business in Wigan, Scrap Metal, which he runs with former player Tony Karelius. But are his ambitions still restricted to Wigan? Uh, to be honest, I, I still want to, you know, like I said, you know, Wigan's a successful club, you know, and we want to carry on winning things, you know. I don't want to get into a habit, you know, where, you know, losing, you know, in you know, semi-finals or finals, anything like that. I want to carry on, you know, be successful in, you know, in, and win some more medals. I also want to, uh, I've, it's always been an ambition to have a stint in Australia, which I'm, I'm going to do in the summer, and hopefully, you know, I can uh, have a good, uh, you know, off-season, you know, down at Illawarra. Whilst Gregory contemplates new pastures, Maurice Lindsay, Wigan's chairman, sets his sight on improving his own patch. So the man standing on the terrace will always get um, total protection from the weather right. and he won't feel envious and therefore angry when he sees people in these boxes enjoying themselves to right. in total warmth and yes. comfort. That's right. Because a meeting with the architects to discuss the new £2.5 million stand. 
No other club could contemplate such ambition. Historically, we have been the leaders, but I hope that will change. If rugby league expands nationally, as I hope it will and truly believe it will, I think that we'll be playing in cities like Birmingham and Coventry and Newcastle and London before the end of the century. So eventually we might have a final at Wembley. It might be West Ham 32, Wigan 33. But today their coaches hope the focus turns back to rugby league. Wigan, like all clubs, are your pot hunters and... Um, these cup competitions, the unique thing about them is league form has nothing to do with it. It's one-on-one, -on -one, it's a straight knockout situation, and it's who can get it together on the day. This is good. Oh, beautiful gummy from James, and he's in. Yes, he's in. Never say die, Halifax. Those two sides still remember Wembley, and I know that the Halifax boys will want to reverse that decision, and I know the Wigan boys will say, well, you know, we beat them by that many points last time, let's get out there and do it again today. So, yeah, I think it's going to be a great game of football. Well, let's hope so. Now, the team news today is that Wigan are without two key players, Jed Byrne and Dean Bell. Now, they were suspended following last week's rather stormy game against Salford. They were suspended by the Rugby League on Thursday evening. In the case of Dean Bell, well, they threw the book at him. He got six matches. Tomorrow, of course... Well, that's not him, but he's there lurking somewhere because I think he's up to some sort of trick. What's going on, Harry? Well, I'm not up to any trick, but I'm hoping that Doncaster perhaps might get their hands on one of these uh, trophies dares in the future. <laughs> and talking about uh, dreams and fantasies, and I don't have that many, honest, uh, this is mine. I've always wanted to wear this shirt and go out to a packed crowd at Central Park. How about this? Dream on, Gratian. <laughs> I'll tell you, if you've creased it, you're in big trouble, I should imagine, later on.